Hi everyone, it's Raina. So this video is looking at three neurotic traits that Sagittarians may display. And I only have this sign and another sign to do before I complete this series. And my son is in Sagittarius. So I felt like I didn't know what to say about Sagittarians being neurotic. Being a son in Sag, I always feel like my neurotic traits come from having a moon in Virgo, but uh, I digress. So anyway, because of what Sagittarius represents, namely freedom, number one is an inordinate need for freedom. And this can present itself in different ways. The one that I always think of has to do with personal relationships. In the tarot, the Knight of Wands is connected to Sagittarius. And the Knight of Wands, I think, is rather commitment phobic. And so Sages might do this when it comes to their significant other relationships Maybe even if they rent an apartment, maybe they would rather rent than own. Maybe they would rather, you know, live in Airbnbs <laughs> rather than sign a lease. I think that I, I haven't had a lease in uh, decades, and I like it that way. Um, and my partner is a Sag as well, and we've been together for decades too. And I think in a certain sense that only certain signs can really understand why Sag is wired the way that they're wired, because um, this need for freedom isn't across the board. Some signs or individuals may feel like a certain sense of, oh, this person loves me because they are, uh, they want to put a ring on it or whatever. And, oh yeah. And that's the thing, you know, my partner, my partner and I, uh, don't, we're not married. We've been living together all these years. And that idea is just, it, it carries with it such, um, I don't know. I was going to use the word heaviness, the idea of commitment at that level, signing a legal document. It just like makes me almost want to break out in hives because it just uh, seems so much the antithesis of what SAG stands for. And for some SAGs, you know, the whole idea of signing a marriage certificate or some legal document can almost feel like it's uh profane like how can you legislate love and so that's another way that sag gets out of it but here's the thing is that the the sagittarians who are the most commitment phobic even if it's not even getting married but just cohabitating, having a more serious relationship, um, they may be quite convoluted in their reasoning for it. And that can lead to being rather neurotic about trying to escape any sort of commitment or get somebody to pin you down. The reason I would say that it's neurotic is because there's a preconceived notion that it's going to be uh, a negative experience. So you could even call it like a phobia in some cases. And it may be exaggerated. So that's another reason why it may be on the neurotic side. Number two, Sage's relationship to religion. Sagittarius rules the ninth house, 
through its ruling planet Jupiter. And in part, the ninth house can be the higher mind and the God house and different uh, organized relig religions or systems of philosophical thought. There's also a connection with moralism that's attached to this area as well. And so it's not, I don't think it's uncommon for sages to gravitate towards some form of religious belief system. But just like uh, there are different types of um, Sagittarians in general, um, sometimes how they relate, you know, spiritually is going to differ as well. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't be surprised if there were a decent number of Sagittarians who are um, atheists, although probably that isn't very likely. I, I would be interested if anybody out there knows a Sagittarian who is an atheist, you know, confirm that for me. But the reason I was going to say that is that a lot of times I think of atheists as um, devout in their atheism and also evangelicals because they, they like to spread their belief system to others. You know, if there's ever like some kind of discussion online, you can leave it to the atheist. To, you know, if somebody says, I'm sending a prayer, you know, you get some kind of troll who says, uh, there is no God, you know, quit deluding yourself. And so especially a Sagittarian who has uh, been, who has felt um, bitter about religion uh, because, because this may occupy a place in Sag's life more so than the average person, or they may pl place more um, emphasis on it. Uh, and this is, because Sag rules that house and it, Sag, Sagittarians tend to be philosophical and all religions have their own brand of philosophy, right? And so, so there, when somebody believes a certain type of dogma, and, and uh, they meet up with somebody who has like a different way of looking at things and maybe thinks that the other person is in a cult, <laughs> uh, that's when it gets a little bit heated. And uh, I once uh, heard someone say that a cult is any belief system that you're not a part of or any religion that you don't belong to. And that's pretty much the truth, but of course there is the more fanatical uh, definition. And some sages may be fanatical when it comes to their religious beliefs. And, uh, and along with this can come a rather preachy attitude they often say that sages can display this type of uh, spiritual arrogance, if you want to call it that, and yet they don't even live up to their own standards. And so they are hypocrites because um, they're not practicing what they preach. And I don't think that that's always true. I don't think all Sagittarians are sanctimonious or anything like that. But I do think that it can be one of the potentials that Sagittarius is all about. Number three is the truth. <laughs> Sagittarians oftentimes demand the truth. But as we know, the truth can undergo 
um, some distortions as well as be used as a weapon. So when Sagittarians are undeveloped or maybe have um, inner planets in Scorpio, <laughs> I know that sounds really bad towards Scorpio, but I'm just talking about the influence of the lower nature of Scorpio, where there's a vindictive, um, you know, element to whatever the person is doing. So there could be that as well. But the bottom line is that um, sometimes, and I hear this, doesn't have to be the sign of Sagittarius. It's just that Sagittarius is connected to truth. But um I've heard people in recent years say, well, uh, it's the truth. So in other words, justifying uh, writing something online or, you know, that's mean and, and, you know, maybe to a content creator, maybe just saying something face to face to someone and when the other person gets offended, it's saying, well, I'm just trying to be honest. And you get the feeling that honesty is being used as a weapon for that individual, and they're hiding behind the truth. So that's what I mean when I say that the truth isn't really just what it seems to be. And in terms of wanting the truth from others, Sag is, the, again, this can be like a moralistic thing that Sagittarius believes that the truth will set us free. But I guarantee you that there are plenty of Sages that if they found out, if their partner said, partner said, well, okay, if you really need to know, I'm cheating on you, that the Sag would go ballistic. Certainly they wouldn't just be um, unconcerned or just letting it go unless they were happy to be leaving, having a good reason to leave the relationship, that is. So um, a lot of times a Sag person may alter their behavior as they get older because they realize that a lot of people can't handle the truth and realizing that um, sometimes telling the truth can lead to punitive blowback. Um, and that's actually redundant, saying a punitive blowback. But anyway, yeah, it can lead to blowback. So um, and that's because, again, that people um, don't, you know, a, a perfect example, and this happened to me, I was uh, somebody who was involved in poetry uh, readings and slam competitions before they became mainstream. You know, I was at the the beginning of all of that when it all started before it became on uh, whatever it was, MTV or whatever. No, um, Comedy Central, I don't know. But anyway, um, and s people would, uh, I, I, I had people ask, ask my, people would ask my opinion about their poem. So you could say that they respected my opinion. They thought that I was good and they they wanted to, to know what I thought of their poem. I realize now that people do that because, and you know, it's just like when a woman says, how do I look? Do you like my outfit? Is that they want reassurance. They don't really want the truth if you don't like what it is. So I don't play, I didn't play that game and I was being genuine and I wasn't being brutal, but I just said, you know, about like, I can remember two people whose poem I explained what I felt needed improvement. And I could tell that both of these people, I don't think that they were very happy about that. And so the thing is, is that 
you could look at um, somebody doing that as being dishonest because they had an agenda. They had an ulterior motive. They weren't really seeking to, you know, be the best they can be for their poem. They wanted to know that they had written a kick-ass poem. Um, so the thing is that truth for Sag is very important, but Sag may find through trial and error that other people react to the truth in a way that is very confusing. And Sag may feel that confusion and not know what to do. And that's where the neurotic tendencies come in. Uh, so there may be, uh, because Sag, most Sag people really believe in being honest about things. And so they will agonize about any time that they have to alter their opinion in some way or tamp it down or whatever. They, you know, uh, Sagittarians are known for being blunt. And like for me, um, I have learned that maybe some people are very sensitive. So sometimes when I do private readings, I'll say, you know, I tend to be blunt. Is that okay with you? Because I don't beat around the bush. I don't like to do that. I think that it it's not necessary. But obviously other people are not me and they have different... Um, reactions. And so that can make you feel, if you're a Sagittarian, you can feel like, you know, a sense of angst, uh, anxiety, dealing with other people's potential reaction to your situation or your assessment, especially if they are soliciting your opinion on something. So the, you know, in this particular case, I would say, if somebody uh, ever asks me again for something, I say, look, do you really want this or are you looking for reassurance? Because I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you how I feel. And so you're, you know, being warned in advance. If you don't really want my opinion, please do not ask me for it. Easy peasy. And, uh, you know, <laughs> they re really, I don't think anybody will get angry at you for saying that. And you save yourself a lot of heartache in the long run. Okay, that's what I have for you. I hope that you enjoyed this. If you would like a private reading, the link is below. Take care. Bye.